So you've used many, many websites. You've been all around the World Wide Web. It's now time to really take a look at what exactly a website is. So first, let's start with the entire World Wide Web, because I think you really need to look at the entire World Wide Web before you look at an individual website. The entire World Wide Web consists of web pages that are interlinked by a really simple method. It's just an A tag. And so they invented an A tag to say, if I want to move from one file to another very quickly. Now think in terms of files, not really in terms of web pages or websites or anything like that, but in terms of files. There are files stored on servers across the entire World Wide Web. And a server is nothing more than a computer that has a connection to the World Wide Web and some software running on it that will find and retrieve and send out files that are, um, that are asked for. So we have one file that's on the World Wide Web, and that file happens to contain something called HTML. And the HTML in that file, and by the way, files on the World Wide Web don't have to contain HTML. They can contain anything you want them to contain. Anything that's in a file can be on the web, on a web server, and served by that web server. In fact, that's why they call them web servers, because they serve files. OK, so we have a computer connected to the World Wide Web. It has, or excuse me, connected to the internet and it has files on it. One of those files has something called HTML in it, and we've been talking about HTML. It's a way of marking up um, information to say what that information does or what it looks like or what it is. And in this case, we have a particular tag called the A tag, which unfortunately is not called the link tag, which is probably a better name for it, but it's called the A tag, which stands for anchor. And this A tag is allowed to um, reference a file. And that file can be on the same computer or it could be on any other computer that's connected to the internet. And so the file has an HTML format, and so it's served by a web server. The web server, and this is the difference between the internet, by the way, and the web. The internet is just all the interconnected computers running whatever software they need in order to communicate with each other. The web, on the other hand, is a specific protocol for exchanging HTML files, for exchanging these kinds of files that have what we're going to now call web pages. Okay, so backing up, we have the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web has many things, excuse me, backing up, we have the internet. The internet is a system for exchanging files between computers. One of the ways that we exchange files between computers is called the World Wide Web. And in more technical terms, it's called the HTTP um, protocol. Okay, so all of that is really background to what I really want to get to, which is the notion of a website. But to get to the notion of the website, we have to back up to the whole notion of the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web is a set of interconnected files. They're interconnected by this very simple method called the A tag. The A tag allows you to specify another file somewhere on the internet. And, um, and, by, and the browser then interprets that and makes a little hotspot on the web page. Whatever, whatever text you or text or image you put inside that A tag turns into something that is clickable. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take the familiar and make it a little bit strange. You've clicked web links millions and millions of times, but now I want you to stop and think about what happens when you, when you click one of those web links. The browser has read that A tag, it's interpreted that A tag, and it's said, oh, okay, it's an A tag, so I need to make it into a hotspot. The hotspot is going to um, uh, comprise anything that's inside that A tag. So you click on that A tag, and the name of the file that you want is sent out from your browser to the web server that, um, that you're connected to. Um, and, well, not exactly. Um, let, me, let, me, let me finesse this a little bit because it's a more complicated story that I don't really want to tell. But in effect, the file that you name inside of the A tag is retrieved. And that file is likely to be an HTML file. And if it is an HTML file, it's sent back to your browser and your browser displays it. Okay, so that's the general notion, right? So the reason I mention this in a topic on websites is because, in fact, it's the entire web that's the website. There are really no individual websites. There's just sets of pages that are interlinked, interlinked by these A tags. So in, in essence, the entire World Wide Web is one site that's interlinked by A tags. Now, of course, that's not the way we think about it. We think about it as um, my website. That's my set of pages that are on the internet that are all together, unified as one whole. 
So how do you get to that from this idea, which is the real idea, that it's the entire World Wide Web that is interconnected, not your website? And you know this, of course, because you can interconnect your website with any other website you want. And in fact, they're not really separate websites, they're just collections of pages. So this is the essence, this is where I wanted to go in, the, in this topic. How do you create a website and what exactly is a website? The best way to think of a website is as a set of pages that are more related to each other than they are to anything else on the World Wide Web. And so you say I have this set of 100 pages or 100 files and this set of 100 files really is a unit. It really is all about the same thing. It all has the same domain, let's call it, the same domain of information. And I'm going to highly interconnect those pages by introducing some notion of navigation through the website. So all of my 100 pages are very highly interconnected. They're all coherent. They're all about the same thing. And inside those 100 pages, I'm going to create divisions that allow the user to see that coherence and to see the unity of all those pages. So in essence, what creates a website? You create the website by marking to the user that your pages, this 100 pages or 1,000 pages or 10 pages, are more highly related than any other pages, um, than they are to any other pages on the World Wide Web. So what I'm hoping I just did was make something that seemed very familiar or all, all of a sudden a little bit strange. Well, that's, that's an odd way to think about it, but that's actually a better way to think about it than that my website is a thing. My website is only a thing by virtue of how good a job I do at making it a thing. So what does that job consist of? That job first and foremost consists of making some kind of unity among all of those pages, making it seem as if all of those pages are alike. How do you do that? By introducing a common look and feel to all of those pages. You give the user a clue that they're all about or they're all belong together. That's thing number one. Thing number two is by giving the user some notion of why do all these pages belong together? And of course, in most cases, they all belong together because they're all owned by the same, um, the same entity, the same organization. And so you go to the website of a municipality or the website of a company, and that's the unifying principle. Now, is that a good unifying principle? Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. I'd like you to consider that there needs to be a unifying principle, and you, the creator of the website, are responsible for uh, enabling that unifying principle by creating that unifying principle and it's not they're not just unified because you made them into a website they're unified because you decided there's some domain of information that all of these pages are going to be about and you express that by the look and feel but you also express it by the navigation of the site by breaking that domain that overall realm of information that you want to create on the site into a set of kinds of information and those kinds of information are the major divisions of the website. So I want you to think of websites now not as sets of pages but as divisions of information inside a larger domain of information. The website is the domain, the domain is divided into types of information and you also provide ways of navigating between the types of information and items of one particular type or another. So that's the notion of a website that I want you to carry forward a collection of files that are unified by you so that they express a, a, a coherent domain of information that's well divided and organized for the user to use. Okay, let's see if there's anything else I need to tell you in this topic. Oh yeah. So when websites began, anything went, really. And I was there, I created a lot of websites very early on and it was kind of fun because you could do whatever you want and there were no standards at all. And even the idea of the, even the most fundamental idea, probably the first standard to emerge, the idea of the home page, was still sort of in its infancy. And what does that page do? And what are the standards? And what can users expect? We're now really pretty far out of that age where anything goes. And it's surprising to me actually how quickly things have kind of coalesced and how we at least have a few sort of uh, stakes in the ground about what a website is. And the first big stake in the ground really is this idea of a home page. Very quickly it was established that you needed something that was the starting place, the landing pad, the, the place to begin. And so, it was, so the name home page kind of was, um, was, uh, was kind of coined. It's an interesting question. I'm not really sure how it was coined, but the idea of a home page was coined. And, um, uh, 
and that was considered to be the starting place. I actually like conceptually, instead of thinking of it as a home page, as a default page. It's the page that will come up if you don't ask for any particular page. And so what would you want from that default page? You'd want it to lead you to all the other pages. And in fact, that's what our home pages have come to be. So consistent uh, standard number one is the idea of a home page, the front page, the landing page, the cover page of the site. Those are all, by the way, perfectly applicable terms, the default page. They're all perfectly applicable terms for that same concept of, the, of, the, of that main central, all good words for describing that same page. We happen to call it the home page. Then standards of look and feel, really that there is a standard look and feel across all the pages, which wasn't necessarily the case early on in the web. That's the next standard that emerged. Then we have, a, the ne then we have another level of standards that are really less apparent, but still there and still really beginning to hold sway on the web. And one of them is the idea of logoing and branding being near the top of the page, right? And that's something you might have thought about before, but again, making the familiar a little bit strange, that's the standard that we put a logo, some kind of identifying image and some kind of identifying title and something that introduces the site at the top, more or less of every page, right? The standard that's emerging. And then another standard that's, that's emerging is the idea of some sort of global form of navigation that's always present, that takes you to the main divisions of the site, that shows you the main organization of the site, that keeps you oriented in the site, and that's also always present. Um, less standard is where that appears, but you know, more or less it's also near the top, maybe in a horizontal band across the top. A little bit less standard is the idea of a local navigation. I'm inside one of the sections of the site and I want to move around inside of one of the major divisions of the site. That generally speaking is something that goes along the left side of the screen below the main, below the global navigation and is allowed to change from place to place, is context laden. Right? So these are some of the standards that are emerging. The idea of a small text box where you type in a term and hit a go button and search happens. And when you hit the search button, you get the next page, which is a summary of all the other pages on the site um, that are responsive to the words that you typed. And then you click on one of those pages and go to it. Yet another standard. So what I want you to see is that these things aren't written in stone, first of all. You may take them for granted, but they were invented and they're being, they're being evolved as we speak. Other standards are coming about. For example, the standard of how do you express relation, related items that aren't that are incidentally related to the item that you happen to be viewing. That's tending to go on the right side, the local nav on the left side, the links or the associations on the right side, but that's really much far less of a standard. So as we go along, and I think this is the, the, pl the place to sort of wrap up this topic, as we go along, more and more of those standards of how we organize our, our web online presence are going to emerge until they become completely second nature the way that a book is second nature now. Books were invented at one point. Books had to evolve all the navigation techniques and all the standards for how you make a book. That all had to be invented, but it was invented so long ago and has changed so little for so long that we take it for granted. And someday the web will be like that as well. And online electronic information will have those same sorts of standards and we'll no longer have to talk about it and teach it in advanced courses.